So you pull up to the barn and you ask somebody where's the trail horse and they point to this guy. Are you confident about riding him? Probably not. But watch his progress. This is the story of Justice. When we brought Justice to the farm, he was a bundle of energy and full of himself. So we took him to the round pen to work on a lot of different things. Here's his story. We introduced him to the tarp and a lot of other things to desensitize him and get him acclimated and on pace to be a great little trail horse. So who we have here, this is Justice. He's a 16 month old Rocky Mountain stud colt. Uh, just a few weeks into training. Um, right now I'm just working with basic ground manners and uh, building trust with them. So we're gonna do a little jumping exercise and a little tarp, you know, get them desensitized with the tarp. So you ready, Justice? You ready? Come on. When I'm training a horse, I like to introduce them to low level jumps. You'll see why later in the video. Justice took to it right away. As I'm working with him, you can hear the sound of the chain that's attached to his halter. As I said, he was a stud colt, so he's a little stubborn, but the weight of the chain and the sound of the chain made a big difference. You can see right here, he's being a little nippy. So, that's the leader of the herd. I want him to stop, but I don't want to hurt him. I want but him I do to need follow to get me wherever attention. I go. I want him to trust that he's not, uh, trust me that I'm not gonna hurt him. So these little exercises build trust and companionship in your horse. And like I say, he's very fresh. Just had him a couple weeks. He was not halter broke. He wouldn't lead. Very wild little colt when we brought him here, but uh, he's getting better. Still working on his ground manners and um, space, but he's getting a lot better. So it's uh, progress, progress. One exercise that I do is that I put my horses in motion. And once I put them in motion, I woe to them. At that, I expect them to stop what they're doing, turn, and then walk to me. I do this over and over again until they fully understand what I'm asking of them and it paid off. One day, Justice escaped from the round pen, and as he was running around free, I came out and called to him, and he stopped what he was doing and came straight to me. The neighbors that were standing around were quite amazed, but I do this exercise over and over again. You can see right here, he came in a little too fast on me and got too close. That's something we've continued to work on and he's gotten a lot better. He stops before coming into my space now. What he's about to do is a lead free jump. He could have gone anywhere in the round pen, but because I went that way, he came that way exactly what I want him to do. So I just saddled up this little colt. Second time having a saddle on his back. First time I'm putting him in motion. Come on, up. Come on, up. Let's go. She's got his arch back, his uh, back arched up. Come on, hey, oh, let's go, let's go. He wants to do some bucking. There you go, a little bit, a little bit. Ah, come on, son, let's go. Up. 
Being able to call to your horses while they're out to pasture and have them come takes time. As I mentioned earlier, there's a relationship that's built on trust and respect. You can break a horse and make it fast or make a horse and make it last. No different with humans. Any healthy relationship has the foundational principles of trust and respect. Other people can call, but they won't come. They know my voice specifically, and that is because I spend time with them. And they will not come to another. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Here they come, here they come, here they come. Woo-wee! Yes, sir! There's about another eight acres of pasture where they're coming from. So they can be pretty far in the back, but if they hear me, I'm confident that they will come. Training was going great with Justice, and then would you know it, an accident occurred at the barn. He cut himself on a piece of metal and had a deep laceration to his fetlock. My primary vet was out of town, so I had to use someone I wasn't familiar with. The process was a little shaky, but when my primary vet returned, he got things under control, but the healing process still took about six months. Now we're up to current day training. But wait, let me go back to the beginning. Let me show you how things started. This is the first time I was attempting to lay justice down, so you'll be able to see the progress. This is the first time I've worked with Justice since the injury, and this is his first time being laid down in over six months. He's doing pretty well with it. You can see his rear fetlock there. That's the one that was hurt. It's healed up pretty nicely. It doesn't appear to be giving him any problems. I've been doing this with him for quite a while. This teaches him patience and trust. He doesn't move until I move. If I lay there 10 minutes, he'll lay there 10 minutes. If I lay there 20 minutes, he'll lay there 20 minutes. I'm sure there are a number of ways to lay a horse down. This is the way I do it. I stand opposite of the leg that I'm going to pull on and then slightly pull them back to take a step back. The ultimate goal is to get Justice to lay down without using any ropes. But like I said, this is the first training he's had in over six months. So I'm happy with where he is right now. So from here, we're gonna take a walk across the road 
on the other side of the levee to the river bottoms. Over here is where I do a lot of my training for my trail horses. There are a lot of obstacles, a lot of laydowns, and a lot of wildlife for them to be exposed to. All the jumping I was doing with Justice was for this very reason. I like to build confident trail horses. As you can see, I'm working him with the saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth. It gets him acclimated to everything before I get in the saddle. Because of the injury, Justice has not been ridden yet. Because I spend so much time on the ground working with my horses, I have no concerns about getting in the saddle or encountering anything while we're out on the trail. By the time we get to that point, they've been exposed to so much that the transition is pretty easy. They trust me and I trust them. So it works. And that's what you want in a trail horse. This log right here was pretty wide, so we had to stretch out to get over it. As I said, I like to expose my horses to a lot of different things so that we can have safe trail rides and challenging trail rides and enjoy it all at the same time. <laughs> 